I'm hematologist oncologist Dr. Tony Talibi. Today we're going to discuss small cell lung cancer. I have the pleasure of being with Dr. Jorge Gomez, assistant professor of medicine at the University of Miami and co-leader of thoracic oncology. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Dr. Gomez, what is small cell lung cancer? Small cell lung cancer is one of the types uh, of lung cancer that exists. It's uh, somewhat different from non-small cell lung cancer in, in uh, actually in several different ways which I think we'll discuss. Um, it is, as the name suggests, a cancer of the lung which usually grows fairly quickly and usually metastasizes to other areas of the body fairly quickly. How is it specifically different from non-small cell cancer? There are several different things that, that differentiate it from non-small cell lung cancer. Uh, Small cell lung cancer is, is usually almost exclusively a tobacco-related malignancy. So the vast majority of patients with small cell lung cancer are either smokers or heavy ex-smokers. Uh, it's very uncommon to have a small cell lung cancer in a non-smoker. It happens occasionally, um, but it is very, very uncommon. That's the first uh, difference. The second big difference is that the treatment of small cell lung cancer usually does not include surgery. Uh, even in early disease, although it sometimes can, and, and again, we'll, we'll discuss that also. Those are the two biggest differences. I see. So are there any, besides smoking, are there any other risk factors that predispose one to developing small cell lung cancer? There are some, of, uh, there are some other risk factors, and they're really the same risk factors as uh, the risk factors for non-small cell lung cancer. Things like radon exposure and, and radiation exposure, mm -hmm. basically, those are really the most important things. Patients always want to know from us whether they should seek genetic counseling if they've been diagnosed with cancer. What about small cell lung cancer? In general, small cell lung cancer is not a disease that can be inherited. Um, so genetic counseling really is not as important for this disease. Okay. We'll get to the, the specifics of treatments in a bit, but just generally speaking, let's say someone has had a biopsy, it's come back positive for small cell lung cancer. What should that patient expect next? The first thing we do when we have a diagnosis of usually of any cancer, but specifically of small cell lung cancer, is we do what's called staging. And, and staging is to try to figure out how far the cancer has gone from the original site. Staging includes a lot of different things. And in small cell lung cancer, we usually will do CAT scans of the chest mm -hmm. to, to visualize how much disease there is in the chest. Uh, we will often do, or usually, almost always do, MRIs of the brain to see if the disease has gone to the brain, which is one of the sites that uh, it commonly goes to, and we frequently do PET scans to really take a look at the whole body to see where else the disease may have gone. Mm -hmm. Should one's diet change once they've been diagnosed with small cell lung cancer? That's a kind of a difficult question to answer. In general, my belief is that a good balanced diet is always the best diet. Uh, there isn't really any proof that any specific diets can improve the outcome in any cancer. Mm -hmm. But I think that people should be allowed to play a little bit with their diet as long as they get enough nutrients. The most important thing when you're diagnosed with one of these types of advanced cancers is that you need to try to keep your weight because you will often lose weight with chemotherapy. I see. What about smoking? You know, oftentimes people that have small cell lung cancer are smokers. Should they quit smoking once they've been diagnosed? Everyone who has been diagnosed with any cancer should stop smoking. Um, smoking is, is bad for your health. Smoking will worsen your lung function. Um, it, if you have an advanced extensive cancer, it may not give you another cancer. But stopping smoking can improve your overall lung health and improve your outcome. I see. What about secondhand smoke? Does that also, can that lead to small cell lung cancer as well? The problem with secondhand smoke is that it's very difficult to quantify. You can ask a patient how many cigarettes they've smoked a day and for how many years, but it's almost impossible to quantify how much secondhand smoke you've had. Mm -hmm. um, it is likely that secondhand smoke can lead to small cell lung cancer if the exposure is, is large enough, but, but it's very difficult to prove. I see. <clears throat> There's a very big concept in small cell lung cancer called limited stage versus extensive stage small cell. Can you please explain what that means? For most ca cancers, the staging system is complex. There are stages 1, 2, 3, mm -hmm. and 4, and sometimes 1A and 2A and 3A. Uh, for small cell lung cancer, the staging system is much less complex. Mm -hmm. There are really only two stages. You either have limited disease, where the disease 
is limited to the chest and, and to an area that can be treated by radiation therapy, or you have disease that's outside of that. Uh, if you have more disease than can be treated by an adequate and a safe radiation, then you have extensive disease. So you're saying it's possible to have cancer only in the lung and still have extensive stage small cell? Well, technically it is, but uh, those patients actually can still be treated as limited disease, but in a slightly different way. Uh, for example, if a patient has an area of tumor that is much too large to radiate, we can often give chemotherapy before radiation to try to shrink that tumor and, and create a field that is safer. So what implications does it have in terms of cure between limited stage and extensive stage? The real difference between those two stages is that extensive stage disease in general is not curable. Once the disease has gone outside of the chest, we can't really eliminate it. Even though this tumor is usually very sensitive to chemotherapy, mm -hmm. you may kill as much as you can, but the disease will ultimately come back. Patients with limited stage disease who are treated with both chemotherapy and radiation can be cured. I see. Are there any support groups that you'd recommend for patients with small cell lung cancer? I think looking around the country, the most important uh, source of information for cancer and for uh, support groups is the American Cancer Society, so their website is actually fairly complete. There are areas that are specifically for patients, mm -hmm. and I recommend that all patients go to that website. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. We hope this has been educational for you.